Hey, what's up, Lee Ron here. In this video, I want to paint this bit of a different scene with you. A beautiful cityscape, but evening kind of towards the night. A lot of challenges with this one, and I also took a lot of leaps of faith, so to speak, and tried out a few experimental and, and scary techniques that um, just to get some kind of a result that I want. I think it's important to always have your vision in mind, and whenever possible, try and achieve that regardless of technique okay let the vision come before the how you do things okay so with that let's jump into it and get started so here we go now i did include uh, in the description box below you can find obviously the reference photo and also my sketch a bit of a higher quality picture what's important to realize here is that look at what i'm concentrating on there are a few areas where i really want to show the details i want to make the details clearer so if you look for example at this part of the building this beautiful dome here same goes for this large building relatively large then we've got a bunch of very interesting uh, light and shadow there right in the background um, i'm actually going to merge i'm looking at the two pictures and i'm going to merge them together so that i can see them both simultaneously uh, and what I want to do is these are the areas where I'm actually going to show some details show some more interesting stuff so I flesh them out with the pencil as well however uh, I don't need it for all the rest here okay I just need a few areas the rest I can handle with uh, spontaneously and actually quite a lot of value will be uh, um, an interest will be created by dealing with them spontaneously okay so I'm gonna get started and I just refilled my palette real quick with French ultramarine I'm always in need of that now I'm gonna get started with a bit of a blue mix um, I'm not gonna go very saturated and you'll see why in just a few moments but here's my plan the initial wash is where you establish the lighter values for me at least that's how I'm gonna approach it in this one uh, establishing the light values and also some edges if I can get some edge definition that will be a good thing so here we go you see some blue of the sky is showing through here so this is what I'm gonna do I'm gonna place that blue in okay like so and then it's a bit of a risky move but I'm gonna use my water sprayer to move the paint a bit and then I'm gonna kind of bury that blue uh, with some other darker values as you can see for the rest of the sky here so I'm gonna get started top to bottom uh, and I'm gonna warm it up as we get closer there and I actually do want a fairly neutral warm mix here nothing too strong yet um, and while it's wet I'm gonna do some uh, work on it so you'll see in just a few moments I'm gonna get this area thoroughly wet okay I want it to be really wet because uh, I'm gonna rework it again and again and again so again warming it up a little near the bottom making sure it's all covered now when I reached a good spot here around the edge of the basically horizon line I can come back and start reworking on these areas so really important I'm gonna create a bit of a darker moody mix here and I need a lot because I'm gonna go wet and wet the paper is already wet and when it's wet you need strong paint to beat the wetness and in addition to that I also have a large area to cover okay so it's a bit of an, a roundabout way of doing it by the way it's been a while since I did a fully real-time narrated video so I may be a bit um, a bit rusty you'll forgive me about that so here we go using some darker values my goal here is to make this area of the sky look like it's peeking through okay now whether I'm gonna get the impression I want or not is a bit up to luck in a way um, we'll see how it goes I'm gonna use more of this just to really move things around um, and then right around the centers of the change from blue to a uh, from a blue cool to a warmer darker sky I'm gonna use a bit more saturated uh, colors here see like that I'm gonna put in some pure red just to get that effect in if I can and this is for this it's really important if possible to use paint straight out of the tube uh, because that way you can mix it up a little faster now this may look extremely dark but don't worry about it it's gonna all work itself out okay now I'm starting to move down now here's the important part here you'll notice there are plenty of very strong 
yellow highlights. So I'm just gonna um, overpower what's in this well with a bit of red, a bit of yellow, a bit of uh, pyro scarlet red, so a bit of a stronger one, then a bunch of water, and will help the paint move, okay? Now, here's where I'm considering whether I should come back and revisit some of these areas. I think I'll leave them, leave them as is. What I can do is just lift a bit. So let's lift just a bit. I'm gonna clean my brush, wipe it on a tissue, and then just lift a few areas that I'd like to be a little lighter, okay? I can actually even use just the tissue. Let's, let's go with that, but very gentle. I'm not looking for a clouds kind of effect. I'm actually looking to lighten up some of it, okay? I'm not gonna go darker up here. Uh, I don't don't really feel like it, honestly. I could, but I'm gonna leave it as is. And now we'll continue pulling the paint downwards. Now remember, this is an evening scene, so it's a little um, a little darker. So I can go fairly uh, dark here in most of these areas, like a good mid value um, to really push the the value to be as dark as it needs to be instead of, you know, later on layering more and more upon it um, to get the value I need. Um, it's better to get it in one go if possible. Even if I go a little darker on some of the highlights, I'd much rather do it this way uh, and later on maybe use some opaque paint or correct make corrections, okay? Um, because I'm gonna get the benefit of a smooth wash. Now I'm gonna put back a bit of uh, very muted blue into the water and this will create this nice silvery look here, okay? Uh, this is all I'm looking for really for this wash. I could uh, use this opportunity to put in some more of the beautiful colors I see, like for example, kind of a hint at them, okay? It's not gonna be anything final, but I really love the dome on the right. So why not make a bit of an indication for its shadowy part here? just to get some of this blue here moving. Uh, and it should be fairly light though, so I'm just gonna lift back some of that, uh, help it blend with its uh, environment, just with a bit of water. Um, what else do I see here that's interesting? This dome here is fairly interesting. I could use a nice little green on it, um, even just green, <laughs> I'll, I'll add a bit of blue, uh, but even just the green would work, um, even just around it. I don't want to push it to be too dark but all these small touches are just preparations for later okay you don't have to do them but you will get softer edges so why not uh, hopefully I did a decent job uh, enough with the sky here uh, obviously could be better uh, I think I may have another go at a sky or maybe practice skies in particular I feel like that's something I want to strengthen an aspect of my creation in any case now we're gonna let this dry then come back and start working on the lower section so this is fully dry and actually, actually after looking at it, I pretty much am 100% sure I'm gonna retry the sky here. I'm not very pleased with how it turned out. This area in, t in its entirety should be much lighter, but this is what we got. And with this, we will work and make it uh, look good. So uh, the top half, I don't care about that at all anymore. I'm actually working from this section and downwards. Now we have a bunch of stuff here, mostly mid values, some very dark values, uh, and I'm gonna try and create a nice balance with them. What you have to understand is in order for this to register with the viewer, they don't need all of these small details and everything you see there. They just need a clear indication of this landmass this landmass, the bridges connecting them, and a few buildings just so that we have somewhere to rest our eyes on while maintaining those small highlights, okay, of the, sh of the um, sunlit buildings, okay? This is what you do want to uh, preserve here. So let me just bring the palette a little closer and we'll get started. Uh, I don't know exactly what color I wanna mix necessarily. There is a lot of um, warmth and haziness in the scene, so let's get started. I'm gonna put in some blue here. I'm gonna add a bit of this uh, yellow ochre, one of my favorite colors, really beautiful. Um, and then I'm gonna add some warmth, maybe with a bit of red. And I'm just gonna look at it and try and figure out what will work in this example. Uh, I have a bit of a test paper here in the drawer that I can use just to look at stuff and, and judge it uh, and, and just imagine it on paper. This is a little, this is interesting. This is close to what I want. Um, I do need more and I do need it um, 
to be a little stronger, I think. So I'm just gonna add a bit of everything really here. Uh, I need a large quantity, a really large quantity here because I'm gonna work, I want this to be relatively uh, even, okay? I'm gonna add a bit of, uh, a little bit more red and I think we're getting closer, a bit of water and we can get to it. Now, I'm gonna start with the buildings at the back. Now, because of all of the highlights, there's actually a bit of an advantage here because we can get away with not filling, filling up all of the areas. We have some break lines. You can stop where the highlights are. Uh, so let's get started. Now, this is where you want to, uh, as much as possible, move away from the literal and try and create something that looks good, okay? Uh, don't try to look at every bump you see in the scene itself. Think beyond that uh, and, and really try to devote yourself to expressing what you see, okay? designing the shapes in an interesting way. Uh, I care much more about that now than actually following any pencil lines or anything like that. I do follow the overall, obviously, the vision of spaces. Um, but aside from that, uh, nothing much. There's a bunch of just abstract shapes here uh, of sunlit buildings. We do want to preserve some of that. Um, See, just designing these very random shapes here it should be good enough. I'm gonna make my way across to the other side of the river, add a bit of coolness. I don't know why this side feels a little cooler. Wasn't planning on, but here we go. Added a bit of coolness to it. Now here on the right, in addition to this, actually, you know what, this is warm. Uh, the, the right side area is warm. Let's go with a bit of uh, this yellow. Now here you do wanna pay attention to uh, some of the shapes you want to make sure that you're respecting the shapes that you do want to uh, show the viewer well, which is mainly these uh, structures here, okay? So I am going to do some negative painting, which is great. It's going to provide me with another point where I can stop the wash, okay? I'm going to go a little cooler here, working under the palette. Uh, so something like this. I am finding myself giving up on highlights that I actually want to preserve uh, out of stupid habit. Uh, I'm gonna try and battle that, but sometimes can't be helped. Um, a shape works and then I'll end up eliminating it just because I'm, I wasn't paying attention or something silly like that. Uh, but in any case, here's where it really helps for the brush to have a good tip. Because um, I can work fairly easily around all of these structures. Now let's tie it in with uh, the left section. This part is star starting to dry, but it doesn't matter. What I care about is the bridges. So let's create the impression of bridges, okay? So they're basically a line and then the legs for the bridges. Uh, so here we go, here's another one. They're fairly cool if we talk about color and you know, their temperature. Um, they're not as warm necessarily as the sides. They're pretty much in the shadow as well. Um, as long as I can get these to look good and make sense as bridges, I'm fine. Uh, they do have a bit of a shadow in them. I'm not gonna blend this shadow, I'm gonna keep it simple. Um, this is the bridge with the multiple, uh, I don't know what you'd call these, but legs. So something like this, and you see how this, it's a beautiful silvery feeling on the water surface. Okay, now the reason I'm not moving into this direction yet is because I need to really concentrate on this part, okay? If I could afford it, I would already paint this as well, connect all of it, but I just can't afford it, I need to focus here, okay? So I'm putting a bit of a reflection, but let me show you, I'm just gonna use a bit of this to uh, blend it out, okay? Uh, just to have it a little softer, connect this side of the river. Uh, here I actually see almost everything in the shadow, so let's just put it in the shadow uh, keeping it fairly neutral, the value, it's not too light, not too dark. Uh, there aren't any starking strong highlights too. Uh, I may leave this side of the building in the sun just a bit, you know, the right side here. Um, I actually like the shapes I created here, it's very nice. So something like this. All of these are in the shadow. Let me warm it up. I don't know why, I feel like I do want some warmth in here. See, it's, a lot of it is just instinctual, just whatever I feel like in the spur of the moment very often uh, and cannot be explained with words effectively. 
unfortunately. Uh, now I'm gonna put in some windows here while we're at it because I do want to see what it looks like with some details. Let's straighten this line out a bit. Okay, I think it makes sense. Uh, we'll move on with the last bridge that I just want to make sure I uh, add in while this side is, the left side is still wet. And I get this, the bridge's legs here. And you see how the shapes don't matter as much. You, you have some leeway. I'm going to just darken this a bit, wet and wet, just to get the bridge itself darker than the reflection. Uh, but you see how you have quite a bit of freedom when it comes to the shapes. You don't have to be super duper accurate here. It'll still work out. And I'm going to blend some of these uh, legs of the bridge as well. There is a bit of a um, reflection here in the water that will promptly blend and help move downwards. This here has to be blended just a bit as well. Um, something like this. Left section is done uh, pretty much. We can move on to the right section. So I'm going to continue with this lovely building here uh, because that's where we stopped, uh, indicating some of these beautiful uh, architectural details. This beautiful structures. I love these kinds of city views. Among my favorites. Um, now here it's a question of a lot of preference. Um, I'm just looking at the shapes and trying to create something that's both a very clear and immediate uh, impression. Um, but also has some of the authenticity of the shapes I see. Uh, so you do want to leave some chimneys here, some highlights uh, here and there. Uh, this side can go a little darker, I think. Uh, what's left of this section really is just um, leaving the highlights for some of the chimneys and so on. I can actually cover the whole thing up, uh, which I think I will. Let's, let's give it a shot. I'm actually going to cool this off a bit. I don't know why. If this is in the light, then this area could be a little cooler to balance it out. So we have a, this kind of a chimney here. A bunch of them. They're actually going to be much easier to add later on. Um, but I don't know. Let's try and get some of them in here. A lot of it is just real-time problem solving. So there isn't one correct solution. There's the, the hand movements that you enjoy making and, and the rest is kind of, you know, can be interpreted a multitude of ways. Let's go a little blue here. Let's get rid of some of these details. Just a bit of details that are very abstract. Uh, these chimneys I do want to properly preserve. So we got a line like this and then we'll cut down and then we can move into the actual rooftop while maintaining some of the highlights. Uh, this right section I'm just gonna get rid of for now. Uh, we'll see if it later on if it makes sense or not, I'm not sure. Um, this one last building to go. And this is where I wanna pay more attention, okay? Because I wanna make sure this one works. So just to make sure that this area works out nicely, I'm gonna be a little extra careful. And as I mentioned again, you can wing the rest of the details, but uh, you have to balance it out with some areas that are a little more careful. So uh, under this uh, rooftop, we do have uh, quite a lot of shadow. Uh, same for the both right and left section. It's not necessarily even shadow. It looks a bit like, um, uh, what do you call it? Like rust and you know rain that poured on it a lot and led to this kind of a feeling. What is important is to merge it with uh, the trees that you see here, okay? This has to be a, a, a relatively even transition. Uh, so I'm gonna go like that. I'm gonna add a bit of a darker section up top here, just a bit, just a touch. And these two domes like that. Um, the rest we will add, um, uh, what do you call it? Like after it dries, but for now I wanna make the best out of wet and wet. So this is the time to darken any uh, in between rooftops, things like this, just to bring it out, um, make it feel like there isn't just one straight value for the entire thing, but rather an interesting combination of them. So just using a bit of lines here and there, uh, it will create some, um, some kind of a, um, a hint towards something, just a, a very loose impression. 
uh, for now. Actually, looking at this guy, really, I do feel like I have to have another go at it. Um, it's just not what I have imagined, so we'll see about that. Now, I'm adding in some shadows under the chimneys because I do see some of them, but let me help all of this move a little more, so I'm just going back, just helping it blend a bit. Uh, there are obviously the chimneys here, I want to straighten out. A bit of a sloppy brushwork, uh, but there you go. Uh, I actually like this bridge being a little lighter, but I do want it to... Uh, hmm, you know what? Oh, we'll leave it as, as is. I'm going to leave it as is, I will add some trees behind the building. I want something to make the building pop a bit, so let me show you. I'm just going to add a bit of it here. You see some trees for the background, um, like so, and just to help this edge, you see, pop a bit, and then I can blend it in. To the left, uh, I can kind of control the direction of the water, not perfect, but uh, you can still avoid touching the areas you, you want to preserve fairly easily. Um, a bit of a shadow here for the lower parts of the trees, but not too much. Uh, now here's the thing, we're gonna let it dry, come back and add a few um, details just to bring out some more of the shapes, make it look better. I just see I splattered some water here, that's fine. Uh, no worries about that. So let, let me uh, let it dry for a few more minutes, then come back. So here we are now, everything is dry and this part is a little wet still, but it doesn't matter. Uh, we're at an interesting point in the painting process and I think we can uh, create a lesson here that will benefit us a lot. So here's the thing, if you look at this section, some areas do need to be darker compared to the reference photo. Now here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to completely detach from uh, the literal, what's there. And I'm gonna try and add in those darker shapes in an as abstract and direct manner as I can. You'll see it's gonna be interesting, okay? Now, later on, what I wanna do is add some of the highlights in, being brave about it, and just adding them opaquely, okay? I wasn't planning on doing that, but I do feel like it will benefit the painting. Uh, so we will get a bit of that near the end. So let's get started uh, with some of these darker sections. I'm going to use two of my favorite tools, the brush obviously and the water spray gun, as you've seen me using a lot, just to help the paint move a bit. I'm going to start, uh, now here we're going to have to be a little clever. So on the one hand, um, I want it to still have all the movement and, and dynamic feeling to it. Like look at this bridge, it's just beautiful. But I do need to add some darkness and structure to it to darken this section. So what am I gonna do? A mix of the two. I'm gonna work my way here with a fairly dry brush. And you see this nice little effect. I'm darkening the bridge, adding some substance to it, like so. But then I stop, okay? And, and I can even go ahead and just blend some of it back, okay? But I do want to add this darkness because look at this dark section here. Okay, so let's go at it. Um, fairly dry brush um, that I'm using here. And here's what we're gonna do. And I'm gonna wet it a bit and then I'm gonna dry it a bit uh, as I see fit, okay? Uh, I love the idea of leaving the trees here negatively. So let's go at it like that. We get this kind of an indication of trees because I, we leave them essentially lighter, okay? Added a bit of blue just to darken it up a bit, like so. Whenever you can hint, but now we're at a stage where I really need to make a statement, so to speak, uh, so I can't afford to hint softly, I actually need to show what I'm doing. So here we go, following the shapes I see. You see how loose I am? I don't care about being accurate at this stage. I'm taking a leap of faith that if I just add the dark values to where I see them, things will fall into place, the impression will fall into place. It's very fun. Uh, to paint like this once you are able to let go a bit of the perfectionism and you know of trying to get every small detail in it's very fun it's not easy though uh, i know some people um have a hard time with this method and when they get started and also i don't think it's the right way to do things i think it's just a way okay it's just another way you could take your time with it and, and flesh out every small shape you see and you will be correct okay it will be another correct way of doing it Okay, there isn't one correct way, but here we go, nonetheless. Um, nevertheless, I'm not sure about that ever. Uh, now I will just help these move a bit around here uh, and onto the right section. Look at this beautiful dark 
area here. I'm gonna put that in because it will help everything that's behind it to pop a little more, okay? And it continues behind this dome as well. So here we go, like this. I have a beautiful dry brush consistency right now uh, that I, I really enjoy using. You have to practice this. I have a couple of videos on dry brush. Not the easiest of techniques, but uh, a very useful one um, that I do recommend you uh, try to learn uh, if possible. I'm gonna add this darkness to here, the rusty feeling, as I mentioned earlier, of uh, these beautiful uh, European shingles that uh, have so much rain fall on them so that they get this beautiful shape. Uh, I don't see too clear of an indication of light and shadow here, so I'm not gonna do too much in this section. I will darken this a bit and I will add a lower part to this building. Again, I'm really letting go of the literal and just putting in values as I see them. Look at how this dome gets stronger. I love this. I'm gonna add the window here. This is one of the only probably literal details I'm gonna add here. Um, and with that, believe it or not, I think we got pretty much all of the loosey-goosey fun um, details in. Uh, do I wanna add some structure to these areas? Not necessarily. They work. Uh, I think they work. Next up, we can start adding in uh, the highlights and small details. So let's start with the small details actually. So I'm gonna get similar consistency of paint here. I do need a smaller brush. Now sometimes you first need to wet the brush and then turn it into a dry brush texture uh, because first you need to draw, to wet it for the point, for the, you know, the strong uh, edge. Now hopefully you can see everything. I do plan on upgrading my camera soon so I can zoom in a little more uh, later on when editing. Uh, but for now I do hope everything is fairly visible. I'm gonna add some of the details to this building just to give it some structure. Got rid of some extra paint. And you see this will really help describe the shape of the rooftop. So I'm using these to really bring it out. Okay, hopefully this makes sense. Uh, the shape of the uh, shingles, if you will, or I don't know what these tiles are made of, but I love them. Uh, so that's that. Uh, on top of these rooftops, definitely can add some indication. Just don't overdo it. Um, as soon as you feel like it's too much, Quit. So uh, for me, it's gonna be just these rooftops that are fairly close to us. The rest I'm gonna ignore, like so. Uh, I do feel like there's, uh, very abstractly, I've managed to develop here a sense of uh, within the building, so like a, like a square-shaped building. So let me play off of that and just add a few, perhaps windows or something here. You see this? I don't know, I like the way it looks and the definition to this edge here. So it looks like a block of buildings. Um, this really helps. Here, um, I will add just a bit. So let's go, let's even define the edge here like that, like this, but don't go too much because it still has quite a lot of dynamic feel to it uh, that I don't wanna lose. Uh, here, I wouldn't do too much as well, just a couple of windows, you know, the usual. <laughs> stuff when you're working in this very loose impressionistic style. Enough of that, let's get started with some opaque paint. It's gonna be a bit of a risk, uh, but I do wanna try it out, okay? I do wanna try this bit of a leap of faith. So, so let, me, let me open up some of the opaque paints and we'll get started. Now this is really where we have to remind ourselves to not overdo it. Um, so let me go ahead and try it out. Let's see what this paint looks like. So I actually like this yellow. Um, you see I got uh, PWC cadmium yellow uh, deep and on the other end I have this uh, Jeune Brilliant PWC as well. I need something that's in between, not as yellow, not as cream or white. Uh, so I'm just gonna grab a bit of both and I believe this will work out nicely. Uh, and believe it or not, I'm gonna go straight for that dome here. Uh, let's see what this looks like together, like so. I do feel like it's right side, and side needs to be a little lighter for the effect to really work. Uh, and I know it's not like the typical, it's not a pure watercolor. It is watercolor, okay? I have to emphasize that. Th these are watercolor, but I know it's not like 100% wet watercolor, okay? Some opaque paint 
or transparent watercolor. Some opaque paint is involved here. Uh, if you don't like that, don't do it. I'm perfectly fine with, you know, everyone should paint the way they want to. I'm perfectly fine with that. Out of the school of thought of whatever the result gets you, the result is fine, uh, basically. So here we go, a couple of these uh, beautiful chimneys. I'm gonna bring back some of this yellow that I ran out of a bit, and I'm just gonna place them in strategically. Like so. It's gonna be a, a big, nice part here, contrasting with the building behind. And you see, it just gives it a bit of a sense of light and atmosphere. It really does make a difference. If you look at this section now, it, it really brought out something unique in it. Uh, let's go with this side of the building here. Why not just get it to pop a bit like this? I know it's a big mess and, and the paint is, it's again, it's, it's not wet. so. You get a very dry, opaque feeling. I'm fine with that. Uh, now here at the back, we do have a lot of those. So I'm just gonna go for it. See, I'm just gonna go uh, like this and just add some of these highlights in. See how it creates this nice little sense of light and shadow. Don't be too literal about it. I went dot, 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 but here you can go back again like this. Um, let's see where else I'd like to, obviously here, this is way too dark. There, I have quite a lot to improve with this one, I feel like. Uh, but I do feel like this starts to give it a, the sense that it deserves of light and shadow. Let's take a bit more of that strong yellow, just like this. Let's be a little bold here and there. Um, if it's too strong, you can always grab a piece of tissue, just help it move a bit. Um, let's help define the shape of this rooftop with these. Um, I do wonder if I want to put something here. Let's go for it. A little wider though, I think. Um, let's see a bit of highlights here. This is already quite a lot of highlights. I don't need much there. Now, one more thing I forgot to add. Obviously, the more accurate you're going to be and the more zoomed in you will go. Um, obviously, the more well-defined the result is going to be. Uh, we're going fairly impressionistic here, but if I were to actually slow down a bit and add some more details, you see there's an, you can actually see the window, not pane, but the frame around it. So if we just go like this, you see it got something in addition. So there's a highlight within that. I could go really slowly and redefine these highlights a bit uh, to work better in the perspective. So. There's plenty to do if you take your time with it. Um, one, By the way, I forgot. I wanted to do the same for the sky. And now I wonder if I should. Hmm, should I? You know what? Let's do this. Let's go ahead and... Worst case, we're going to destroy it. But that's fine. So I'm just going to switch to a bit of a larger brush. This is something I rarely ever do. Uh, but let's interfere with the sky here. Let's put a bit of this paint here. Now the brush is a little wet, but that's fine. That's actually going to help us move the paint. Um, so I'm going to put in both uh, this and this yellow and we're going to let them mix. And I'm going to dry my brush a bit. And this is a lot of it is experimentation. Don't worry. Uh, nothing is ruined. Once you add opaque paint, you still have quite a lot of control over it. You can always blend it with, um, you know, the, the sprayer. You can do quite a lot with it, but I did want to, I don't know, make this light area a little more noticeable here. Let's just wet some of it on the palette. You know, if we're, let's experiment, let's try something a little different. Um, it's very easy to get into a pattern and then never leave it. So at the very least, I know I tried and, you know, whatever comes out of it, comes out of it. Now let's help it blend a bit. Actually, almost running out of water here. What I will do is use this piece of paper to just move it around a bit like that. Smoothen it out to match the rest of the wet and wet. And now at least it feels maybe more like there's a lighter section among the sky, okay? This is really getting similar to maybe a different medium, not necessarily watercolor, but I do like that. Uh, I wouldn't go overboard and start filling in all of this section uh, in the center. I don't care much about that. Uh, I do feel like that's uh, a good way for it to work. So here we go, the best moment for many. Uh, I already have this one signed. Um, was wondering if I should go with a white signature, like in, with the white gel pen, but I think this works out well. Uh, and I also 
think you'll love the result after removing the tape. With these darker scenes, uh, it actually makes an even bigger of an impact or difference when uh, you remove the tape, obviously, because most of the painting is dark, so then when you see the light borders, it really frames it up nicely. Let's remove the entire tape, let's not be lazy. And here we go with the final result. Uh, once again, I hope you enjoyed this. So let me show you up close. Uh, you can see here some more of the details on the dome. Very, very loose, very impressionistic, very inaccurate in some ways, but very accurate in others, hopefully. Uh, and now let's wrap it up face to face. So thank you so much for watching once again. I hope you enjoyed this one and I hope you enjoyed seeing the end result. One important note, uh, I do feel like in this one, I had this vision and it was important not to let the technique be a hindrance because technique can become a source of uh, preconceptions or, or um, existing notions that prevent you from achieving the vision. Uh, I think it is important to let the vision be in first priority and only then how you get to it. So if you have a vision, for example, this part should be lighter to hint at the light coming into the scene. It doesn't matter that you don't use opaque paint this extensively in a large area. Okay, I don't care about that. I'm gonna try and achieve the vision regardless of technique. And if you can do that, surpass technique and those limitations and take off the blinders and actually see different ways of doing things, you will grow. Um, with that said, I have a lot to improve here. But in any case, I really hope you enjoyed this one. If you wanna learn how to paint like me, let go, enjoy the process, paint freely and get the results you want. Be sure to check out my frustration-free watercolor course link in the description box below. As always, I wanna thank you once again for tuning in and I will see you again in the next vid.